This video, I will demonstrate how to create an FB01 transaction automation script. Here I have a set of data for some documents that I need to post. Now I'm going to minimize this Excel spreadsheet. I'm going to double click on the Process Runner icon here. Process Runner is a standalone application. It can be installed on a desktop, on a server, Citrix, NVIDIA, VMware, Hyper-V, and best of all, nothing needs to be installed on your SAP backend. Now I'm going to click on the new button here and I can select from the four technologies of Process Runner. So I'm going to keep it at the pre-selected transaction technology. I'm going to put in our T code here, FB01. Now I'm going to click the start recording button. Now I can select from any SAP system across my SAP landscape. So of course, normally I'm going to start out in my quality, my sandbox environment. But then later on, after I've tested the script, after I've, I know that it runs effectively, then I can just simply select the appropriate production system and run it in there. So the great thing is no importing, no exporting is necessary. You just simply log into the SAP system that you want to utilize. Now I'm using a simple username and password, but it does also work with SSO1, SSO2, SNC, Enterprise Portal, as well as HTTP, HTTPS, and also single sign-on applications. All right, now I'm just going to slide my SAP interface a little bit over here. I'm going to pull up the Excel spreadsheet. I like to have it in the background. It's nice and easy to see the data that I need to input. So I'm going to start out with the document date here. For my type, it's going to be SA. And then I have my company code of 1,000. Now I'm going to put in the posting date. And then the fiscal period. Then I have my uh, currency. And then for the reference. And then for my document header text, now that I've filled in the header text, I'm going to click on this fast data entry. And I get this little message here that the posting takes place in a previous fiscal year. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter to continue. Now from here, I'm going to go to this display document overview. Click here. Now I'm going to fill in the post key and the account. Now I'm just going to click enter and here on this screen I'm going to fill in the amount and then the tax code and then if I just move my SAP interface over here you can see my item text. Now I'm going to again click this display document overview. And on this pop-up here for the coding block, I'm going to put in my cost center. And then I'm going to hit enter. Now I'm going to fill in the data for my second line item. Now Process Runner is an automation tool, but in order for me to be able to close out of this transaction, it has to balance. That's why I'm going to be putting in this second line item. Later on when we set up the mapping, we're going to set up looping, so we're only going to need one line item. But again, to close out the transaction, we have to put in at least two line items. So now I'm going to hit enter. Now I'll fill in the amount and the tax code. and the text and then back to display document overview and again the cost center and I'll hit enter and now that this is finished out I have two line items that will balance each other out I can save it and this will end the script recording process now I'm going to bring up process runner now I can name this transaction file, whatever I would like. I'm just going to put demo here. I can save it to my hard driver network. I'll stay with the defaults in Aware folder. 
Once I click OK, I'm taken into the Mapper tab of Process Runner. Now this is what's called the advanced view for mapping. And what I like to do is start out with the simple view. So I'm going to start out, I'm going to click simple view here. And next, I need to link it to the external Excel file that has my data. I do have a data set here, which is stored in what's called the iBook or internal instance of Excel. And so it is within the script file. But of course, all of my data is not there. And so I'm going to go back to the mapper tab here and link it to that external Excel file. So from the drop down here, I'm selecting external Excel. And I've got that Excel file right on my desktop, make it easy to find. It's a little refresh action here. And so now I'm going to be able to map this script to my data set from that external Excel file. So here you can see I have my document date is A, my document type is B, the company code C, posting date and document is D, we have the fiscal period at E, the currency key is F, the reference document number is G, the document header text is H, and then we have the posting key, and so that's I, the account match code or account number is J, and then we have the amount in document currency at K, the sales tax or tax on sales is L, and then we have the item text M, and then the cost center N. And I don't need to worry about these other fields because I'm actually going to be removing them as part of the mapping process. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch to advanced view. Once I switch to advanced view, this brings up all of the screens that I've navigated and shows the fields that are under each of those screens. So I'm just going to lower this a little bit. And now as I scroll down here, you're going to be able to see the second line item fields and those I didn't really pay much attention to in the mapping and that's because I'm going to be deactivating them. So I just want to point out here that my line items start at this particular screen, this document posting overview screen. So I'm going to scroll down here and here we have the second line item and so we have that document posting overview screen again. So now I'm going to click here with my mouse and then on my keyboard, I'm pressing Control Shift. So pressing Control Shift on the keyboard, and then I'm going to scroll down. And just here at this cost center, this second repeated item here, I'm going to click here. And now down at the bottom here in Process Runner in the corner, I'm selecting Edit, and then I'm going to select Deactivate Selected Rows. So now I've deactivated the mapping for that second line item because I don't want to repeat that. It's not necessary for the mapping of this transaction. So again, I'm going to scroll down here. I'm going to go to that document posting overview screen. Now I'm going to click with my mouse. And here from this dropdown, I'm going to select start loop. So we're going to be looping this line item data. And that's why it's not necessary for me to have the mapping for that second line item. So you'll notice that the start loop causes an end loop to also automatically be filled in. And so that is placed just before the save button. Process Runner assumes that you're going to want to end your loop just before the save. Now you can easily, by right clicking on your mouse, you can delete this, you can copy it, cut it, you can move it by following these commands just like you would in, in Word where you can cut and copy text. You can cut and copy the start and end rows and so you can maneuver these and this may be necessary if you're doing nested looping. So now that I have my looping set up, now I need to set up the block type. Process Runner by default will automatically set it up as on value, ignore blank, column A. And so what this means is it's going to start the looping process when it detects a value in column A, it's going to ignore any blanks and then when it encounters another value, it's going to stop the looping process. So this default value will work fine for me. The other part of block type that I need to look at is my header and my line item. So these rows contain header as well as line item data. So I'm going to keep this at the default setting as well, header plus line item. So now that my blocking type is set, now I'm going to go to the Home tab. From here, I'm going to change the Start row to 3. And then my End row, I can make as high a row 
number as I want is Excel is like a 1.3 million limit. So I'm just going to set it at 50 here. And now I'm going to save my script and press the run button. And we'll see if this looping was set up properly. Here you can see my SAP messaging is writing directly to the Excel spreadsheet. And so let's take a look at this last document as it has the most line items. So I'm going to bring up SAP here. We'll just type in FB03. All right, so here you can see those line items. I was successfully able to create the looping for this script. Thanks for watching, and if you'd like to learn more about how to create automation scripts with Process Runner, please see other videos at our website at inawera.com. And also, directly from Process Runner, we do have a help section as well where you can access online video tutorials as well as step-by-step -step tutorials.